Welcome back to Teach Man the Fish Channel. For you, we went all the way to India to bring this recipe into your kitchen. Home cooked curry chicken. Let's go ahead and get started. Chicken masala. Bay leaves. Cardamom, yeah. I guess. I don't know Hindi. If you like any of the ingredients or the equipment that we use in this video, we'll put links down below in the description where you can go to Amazon and purchase everything that we use in the video. Don't get wrapped around the axle over these ingredients. They're down there and they come straight to you in the mail. We're going to use a whole roaster for this. You can use the pieces, dark meat, thighs, whatever. Breaking that chicken down will save you money. We also like what comes inside that chicken. The liver, I like to eat that. I like the flavor of it. Comment down below if you've got strong feelings either way on the liver. Using that off-all package that comes with the roaster can be a little bit controversial here in the United States, but I can tell you that is authentic in That's India. That's a treat. Yes, yes. So it can be intimidating with all of these steps, but I can tell you it's only about eight steps in order to do this. And you start out with marinating your chicken in the spices. There are bits that you end up with that really aren't edible, but you'll save those and actually fry those down. There's good fat, good flavor in that. But you also leave most of the bone in. Having the bone on the meat is actually part of the Indian experience. Not only is there handles to pick things up with, but it's just part of how they eat. You find a great deal of bone in the meat and stews. And remember, we said all of that trimmed fat and skin, save it, fry it down, some of those rib bones, fry all those down and you'll get all the flavor out of that. So you're going to see this large list of ingredients and really the way to look at this while you're cooking it is step by step. You want to get all your spices together and ready to go when you reach each of those steps. Next you'll want to marinate for at least a half an hour or more if you've got the time your chicken in turmeric, chicken masala spice, and plain yogurt. We'll put the amounts in the recipe in the description down below. During that time when the chicken is marinating, you can go ahead and get all of your ingredients together in individual bowls for each of the steps that you're going to pass through while you're making this. You're going to want to prepare all of this beforehand so that all you're doing is adding in the ingredients at the right stage. Here you'll see we're popping each of those cardamom pods because otherwise when they get into the oil, they'll pop inside the oil and splatter oil all over your face. So pop them first and then that doesn't happen. And that's just the example of the first bowl that goes into the oil all put together and ready to go. Again, look at the description down below. You'll see what goes into each bowl and at what step you add it in. As with most cooks, you kind of start out looking at what your tools are. You get to select which pan you're going to use. As most of you know, we're primarily a cast iron cooking channel, but we're doing something a little different. We did a trip through France and we happened to pick up this nice deep walled mineral B deep fryer skillet, carbon steel. So we're gonna go ahead and get that seasoned up, get it out of the package, get that cooking, but the other thing that I would recommend is a deep fryer, a, ch a chicken fryer, maybe a combo set like this, or aluminum. You'll see the video from India was in aluminum style skillet. You can use cast iron, you can use a wok. The one thing that I would recommend, get away from that Teflon. As a brand new carbon steel skillet, we did have to go through a seasoning process just to start this cook. De Bouillet sends their skillets with beeswax on it to keep it from rusting during the shipping and manufacturing process. So you have to go through a seasoning step by step in order to get there. It's not complicated and carbon steel has its great benefits. We'll do a detailed video. Subscribe, you can come back and see. We'll do a detailed video on seasoning of that carbon steel pan. So this is just one round of seasoning, brand new pan, and you have to do the egg test and it passed with flying colors. Only gonna get better from here. There's one particular bowl in your setup that you wanna pay close attention to and that's your tomato puree. Throw just a little bit of set aside garlic, ginger, peppers, tomatoes, and onions into that and you're going to want to puree that down into a smooth mix. That helps your cooking time, your cooking process, as well as gives you a smoother 
or creamier gravy when you go to serve this. Now we've got that pan selected and all those ingredients put together in each of the bowls. Let's go ahead and move forward. I'm also going to show you that you can use this carbon steel and cast iron on induction. Here you can see we render out those trimmings, getting the fat and the flavor out of that to add back into the dish later. Don't waste all that. Full disclosure, I much prefer gas. When you're selecting your oil type, you can go with whatever is your favorite. I use grapeseed because of the high smoke point and it doesn't really drive any flavor profile within it. It's kind of a neutral. And in India, they actually use safflower oil. Here we are with your heated oil and your spice bowl for the oil. You go ahead and throw that in. Just give it a stir every now and then, a couple of minutes. Just make sure it doesn't burn. Start to get that fragrant smell of those spices frying a little bit. Then you want to quickly turn to putting your onion mixture that you set aside for that next bowl. Fry that onion until golden in color. Once that color is achieved, you stop the cooking process by pouring in your tomato mixture. In this part of the process, you do want to stir continuously every minute or so just to make certain it doesn't burn and you're on high heat because that is a pretty large amount of liquid to heat up. Now we've reached a point where we start to cook that chicken. That goes in left to simmer for about 10 or 15 minutes, then add your additional spices, maybe a little bit more yogurt if you like it a little bit creamier. Add in that chicken fat and gravy that you made earlier, then add a little bit of water. You're going to let this simmer for about 25 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, till it reaches the thickness that is allowed to evaporate and until you see that oil start to rise up and sit on top as a skim, that means you're doing it right. This meal is traditionally eaten with naan. It's used as a scoop, and we're gonna talk more about eating with your hands in India, but we went ahead and made our own in a cast iron pan. We actually ran out of butter, and I'm gonna show you a quick and easy way instead of, we live pretty rural, it's a long ways to go get butter into the store, but if you have heavy whipping cream in your fridge, you can use this device and this trick and go ahead and make some butter instead of running to the store, which is what we did to make this garlic butter naan. We'll put links down below in the description where you can go to Amazon to purchase something like this nifty little gadget that in just a matter of minutes and a pinch of salt, you can go from heavy whipping cream to fresh salted butter. All you have to do is mix it up. Now, a creative way to use the drill there instead of the hand crank, takes it down to about one-tenth of the amount of time, but you're left with that butter and a, a leftover liquid that you just simply drain off, and you're good to go, ready to, ready to use it. Never really worry about running out of butter if you've got heavy whipping cream in your fridge. Normally, naan is made in a tandoor oven where you slap that bread, and you can see there on the left, it kind of sticks to the side. You get both baking from underneath and then browning on the outside but you can do this with a cast iron especially if it's a really not a non-stick not a really good seasoned cast iron which mine are makes it a little difficult i have to use a set of tongs but you can simulate this at home right over your gas stove over a radiant heater uh, this is really worth it eventually i'm going to be doing this either in a big green egg style grill or even on a regular grill i'm gonna figure out how to do this naan in my backyard so when you're getting ready to eat this you need to tell your guests that there's bits and pieces in this for example like the cinnamon stick you can pull it out for them but you need to tell them that there's those bits in there they're not meant to be eaten the the bay leaves Traditional Indian food is actually meant to be eaten with your hands. The, the people that I've interacted with there over the last 10 plus years, part of eating is the experience of feeling the food. So it's not awkward or bad manners to reach right in with your hands, uh, dig, feel the food. For I'll give you an example. You know when my mouth is watering, right here looking at this food and not eating it yet. But you know whether or not bread is fresh or the experience that you're getting ready to have when you crisp open some French bread or you feel some soft bread. You're getting to experience that food, the feel of it. And Indian food is the same way, meant to be eaten with your fingers. 
I can tell you that this goes perfectly with rice. And in India, they eat a lot of rice with every, every meal. And typically it's after the entree is served and then you'll finish that off with a little bit of rice. And we chose this basmati rice because it is Indian. It's a bit of a longer grain and it's going more towards this authentic recipe. And that's the way I like to eat it. A little touch on the hot side. Let's give it a go. Mm -hmm. Honestly, we nailed it. Touch on the spicy side, I, I would probably, in order to get other people besides me to like this, I probably will next time drop this back to one pepper instead of two serranos. But it's like we talked about from the store, pick the pepper that you like and you get to define the spiciness of it. And then there's the, the method of using the bread, the naan, to scoop the meat up. That garlic butter naan too. I've got some more practicing to do to get the naan squared away. It's a bit thick. We use cast iron, but it's a little difficult to use when you don't have the big tandoori ovens. I think that's what they're called. Restaurant naan in India, garlic butter, one of my favorites. So YouTube says that this video is perfect for your viewing habits. This is my latest upload. And over here is a playlist you might just enjoy. I hope you liked it. If you did, please click like, subscribe, share, and come on back for more.